So we're going to start off with some mental tuning. And uh, every time you guys come to an event like this, we're going to start there. Because don't, we don't do enough of it in the Inner Circle program. Amanda, you saw a little bit like of it, but it's more spiced up now. So I'm looking at Ruli. OK, I'm like, who let the, <laughs> there go Louie. Come on, man, get your ass up in here. Get your big ass up in here. This guy just sold his company. He's been a, in the Inner Circle for years. And he sold his company for a million dollars. Yeah, yeah. So we'll, we'll wait for him to come in. Okay, so I wanted I wanted to share some shit, Louis. I got some, I got some flames for you. I got some bars for you right now. We're gonna do we're gonna do mindset for this first for this first morning, and you guys know my style. The harder y'all go, the harder I'm gonna go. But I, I'm gonna tell you like this: I'm gonna burn a hole in the fucking roof today. I promise yeah. you. That's one thing you can get, I, I, I will guarantee. Okay. Okay. So Louis, this I, I woke up early this morning, 4 a.m. I went out to my kitchen, and uh, if you guys see my stories, there was a let me let me show y'all real quick. Uh, let me see. So I woke up this morning, and uh, I seen this. Here's a photo real quick, y'all. You guys can see it. There's my kitchen, right? Y'all see that? Y'all see that, right? Big old 40 years old. And uh, there's a note, and there's like a, a little gift underneath. Here's the note. And uh, Lou, this is the first time I cried in, 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 in years. And uh, it's for my wife. It says, happy birthday, my love. Do you remember the time we were really broke you had to pawn your gold bracelet. Surprise. Here's a new one. Love you, Baron Girls. That's how fucking poor we were. You know what I'm saying? So uh, I'm going to read a message my, my daughter sent me, my 13-year-old. And uh, she sent this uh, to me on the way to school. And I'm, I'm going to reach y'all. It's uh, right there, too. OK. I hope there's no booty picture of my wife and <laughs> shit. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you got to keep that relationship you know, spicy. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm going to be a little inappropriate, Keith. You warned her, right? Okay, one time my brother, is Mark here still? One time fucking Mark, we moved to our house in Del Mar and uh, we're uh, moving my drawers and shit. I shouldn't say this shit. The fucking, like the oil popped out and like a little penis ring popped out. And my brother was like fucking terrified. I was like, I ain't seen that shit in three years. It's a true story. You know, give a high. You feel me? What's up, Deborah? So here's one my, my daughter wrote me. And uh, it's going to lead into the presentation right now. It says, happy birthday, Dad. I can't believe you're already 40. It seems like so much has passed in a short time. It still feel, feels like yesterday we were living in North Park, which is our shitty little tiny 700 square feet home. Uh, it says, it wasn't much back then, but it was all I needed. And I'm so grateful for the life that you and Mom have created for our family. It's crazy that you've accomplished so much. I still find it crazy when you attract so many people. I just think, wow, my dad really is that guy. He really is the man. Thank you so much for being my father and being there for me. Thank you for understanding me when I couldn't even understand myself. And thank you for creating this lifestyle for our family. Compared to other parents that are most of the time very calm, but you, you're different. <laughs> you're loud. And powerful, your charisma is unmatched. I didn't even know she fucking liked me. <laughs> I haven't talked to that 13-year-old girl all year long. She won't, close, she won't open the fucking door. Anyways, the energy that comes out of you is unbelievable. It could be a gloomy day, but you're still waking up early, going to work, pumping everyone up. Genuinely, thank you so much for being my father. You're the best I could imagine. How many other people can brag about their fathers? Not much. So thank you for being the best you can. See you at the top. Love you so much. Yeah. 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 So, um, man, these, they fucked me up today. You know, so I didn't even know my wife likes me either. You know what I'm saying? I told you I used that fucking cock ring fucking five years. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> it's like there in a little fucking cobweb right there. It's fucking crazy. So, um, yeah, we're going to start off with some me mental tuning, but I'm going I'm to lean on y'all to, to, to you know, create the culture. So we're going to do the mental tuning. I'm going to break down the whole itinerary. And uh, you know, there's going to be a hangout spot tonight. We're going to have a fucking big-ass party Louis, tomorrow. You know, so I'm going to get you so drunk, you might blow out your other knee. OK, don't worry. We got insurance. And uh, we'll see what we happened at the office. And uh, so we're going to rock and roll. Uh, just one more time, give it up for yourself for showing up today. Cool. Yo, Henry, this is good? 
This is good right here? Uh, yeah. Definitely. Okay, cool. We're, I point at the computer, of course, right? So this is what we're about to do. We're an hour late. Okay. We're going to go over, so push everything back an hour. You know, I always be late. Yeah, I was late last night to dinner. You, you know, I always be late. Uh, uh, we're going to do the mental tuning. Uh, the following thing we're going to do, Mark's going to talk about his bullshit. Uh, we're going to do a lunch break. Trey, Trey is sick. Trey is never sick, but he's sick today. So uh, John Payne is going to handle the afternoon and talk about operations, all that good stuff. We're going to move into day two. And uh, basically, I'm going to walk through our funnel that's generated almost a million dollars autopilot, okay, in a very short time. So we're going to break all that down. And the, th the reason why this, this weekend's going to be different, I'm not going to sit here and just talk at you all. We're going to break down the sessions. Some people will, will be with Henry over there creating content. Some people will be right here with John Pena going, building the funnel. Some people are going to sit with me right here doing the automation trigger. So when you walk out of this place, you will have the same exact thing we've done literally to make almost a million dollars on auto, you know, autopilot. Cool? Cool. Okay, so let's, let's get right into this. Everybody good? Y'all good? Yo, Mark, we need that AC, bro. It's hot as a motherfucker. Okay, here we go. Here we go. So um, uh, I wanted to share that with you because you guys are, are, are very important to me. And uh, man, you know, Lou, when, when I met you, I, we were already doing six figures, multiple six figures per month. But it was a journey. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to share to you my biggest influences over the last 15 years that got me to this point. Okay? So we're going to talk about that. And uh, let's rock and roll. So, um, like, why, why, why are you, uh, like, Amanda, why did you join this, like, why did you guys join this program? Why did you join this program? Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate that. Alistair, how come you, you showed up? Because your ass was trying to hide from us. I was. Yeah. They're like, he's going to Brazil. He'll be back next time. I'm like, fuck that. Get him here right now. I knew as soon as I walked in, it was game over. So, <laughs> <laughs> so why'd, you, why'd you do it, bro? A lot of, lot of it's, uh, let's just talk about money. Big investment. Yeah. Like, why? Because I was ready. Okay. I was ready You're ready. Yeah. And all of the great people that I know in my life, they've all uh, sought out coaching yep. in some way. So I'm no better than, than anybody else that needs coaching. So, um, you know, I'm looking for the support, the community, um, technical knowledge. Um, and plus, I love that, you, you know, the, the closers and the whole community. And just, just getting into it. I'm, I'm, I'm ready. Thank you. Thank you, bro. Thank you. Okay, Louis, I've known you for a minute. When we first tapped in, why did you first tap in? I thought that because we got close enough to let me drive a Lambo. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, there's no fucking Lambos here today. All the Lambos are in the shop. Hold up, there was no Lambo back then. No, there was no Lambo. Uh, <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> got him. Got him. That yeah, Louis Torres. You hey, oh, OG, yeah. <laughs> Yep. Uh, Dr. Susie, I was in a bunch of people and looking at their programs, but everybody was really kind of hands off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're so hands on and you help people. Thank you, man. And like it came through from your staff first that you talked to people like Dr. Mike. Yep, yeah. But when I did that, <laughs> <laughs> sounds familiar. <laughs> I'm like, motherfucker, give me 70 G's? He's my best friend. Fuck yeah, hell yeah, I'm hands off, motherfucker. I'm about to give this motherfucker a hand job. Let me give me a little cock fucking ring, motherfucker. Sorry, sorry. Okay, no more. No. Okay, thank you. Uh, give it up for Amanda, Alistair, and Louie. And, and Louie, for me to you, bro, um, you know, we, we talk all the time. We tap in every other week or so. And just for me to you, there's a lot of people here. For me to you, I, I want to continue to be a, a good example for you. Not at one point, I don't want Michelle to say, what the fuck happened to Mike? 
Like he's in the fucking alley now doing fucking crack. Like what happened to that guy? So I want to continue to, I want to grow. I need, I'm going to continue to grow. I'm going to continue to develop. I'm going to continue to, to hopefully change lives and go off. And you know, it's, it's fucking nuts. Like just shit like this. You're not going to really be able to see it. But like, imagine just making $120,000 in a day. That was yesterday. You can see it right there. $120,000 in a day, Louie. It's boom, liquid, million. You know what I mean? Like, it's nothing. It's crazy. So let's talk about this. So th th what I wanted to get at is, um, I, I believe, I, I, uh, if you've taken notes, I want you to write this down. Infor it's nothing prolific or crazy, but information changes situations, right? So we know that. Information changes situations. So over the last decade and a half, I've been in a pursuit of just finding the truth. In the Bible, it says, the truth shall set you free. Right. So I believe that. Okay, so there's times where people have, like, wrong information, wrong data, and they hurt themselves, they harm themselves, and sometimes they even kill themselves. So what I've been doing over this last decade and a half is I've been looking for information. That's why I gave Russell Brunson $150,000. That's why I gave Myron Golden $55,000 on the front end and, shit, $100,000 on the back end because I've been in pursuit of information. So let's talk about information, information, definition. It's a noun, definition number one, facts provided or learned about something or someone, a vital piece of information. Number two, definition, okay, what is conveyed or represented by a particular arrangement or sequence of things, okay? So everything you have ever experienced is information. I was looking at this Russell Brunson video, yes, uh, two days ago, and I watched this video, uh, shit, three years ago, and he says when we're born, a baby, the only thing they have, the only thing they have fear of is loud noises, like, like a clap, you know, the baby will jolt, right? And the fear of heights. He says, between the ages of three and four, uh, three and five, babies are afraid of the dark. Ch young children are afraid of the dark. My, my three-year-old is like, I don't want to go in that dark room, okay? But from age one to two, they don't have that fear because they haven't learned that yet, okay? So we're just talking about information. It says, everything you've experienced was information. This includes happiness, pain, sadness, pleasure, heat, cold, and more. Okay, if I, if I put a lighter up and my five-month-old, you know, sees it, she's grabbing everything right now, Casuela. She's grabbing everything. If she sees it, she's going to grab it. Okay, my, my Aria, okay, my uh, three-year-old, she used to be so damn bad at shit a year ago, two years ago. She would throw her back. You ever seen the little babies? Ah, cool. You ever seen that? They throw their back. She's throwing her back. And she kept throwing her back. And one day she threw her back on her hardwood floor and smack. She never did it again because she learned, right? So it's information, okay? So uh, let me go through this. Uh, it, let me go through this. It's, I'm going to skip that one line on the top. It says, your mind receives information, analyzes the information, looks to make sense of the information, and the individual seeks to act on the most optimal solution or action. Okay, there's a fire. Don't touch it no more. Okay, there's an opportunity. Let me, let, me, let me figure it out. I learned it. This is how, you know, it works. Great. Next time I see it, I'm going to do that. So it says, people operate on information. I wrote all these words. This includes information received from parents, teachers, books, and magazines, news, etc. The right information uh, can set you free. The wrong information can kill you. Okay. Is that real for you guys? I'm in Australia, let's say, and there's the bayou. And I'm like, hey, man, is it safe to, to, you know, to swim here? Dude's like, yep, 100% safe. Meanwhile, there's like saltwater crocodiles there. The wrong information can kill you. If you don't believe in gravity, you can go to the edge of a building and you can fall down and you can die. Right? So, uh, uh, um, uh, John Payne's brother, Nick Legend, some of you guys have heard this story. Uh, this must have been 2017. He gave Ty Lopez, Louis, 25 Gs. And I was like, what the fuck? You gave Ty Lopez 25 Gs? Are you crazy? He's like, yeah. He's like, when I text him, he answers. When he has the mansion party, I hit him. I tell him I'm in the area. He's like, pull up. He's like, dude, I need to get in that proximity, and I want that information he has. At the time, I thought he was fucking nuts. I couldn't fathom that kind of investment. Okay, so um, let me just talk about this guy here, Ken. He's a coach I had in 2017. He's like, Mike, you're a hustler. I was like, you're damn right, I'm a fucking hustler. Okay, he says, what does Gage do? True story, I was talking about this on Instagram yesterday. What does Gage do? Gage does funnels, Gage does appointment setting, Gage does closing, Gage sometimes helps with payroll. Look at that shit. Elon Musk just pulled up, what the fuck? That's crazy, can you believe that? That's Elon. Okay, so he says, what does Gage do? Gage does all these things. He's like, Mike, how come Gage hasn't taken you out back and shot you in the head? I'm like, I'm like, what are you talking about, man? He's like, you have him doing all this bullshit. I'm like, what? I was like, Gage can do more. He's like, Mike, what you need to do 
is like when we're done, I'm gonna turn you more into a, a engineer, an operator, and less of a hustler. He's like, you need departments, you need divisions, you need specialized units, and you need to like, somebody help me out, compartmentalize, did I say it right? You need to compartmentalize. I'll sell some shit, okay? <laughs> I ain't gonna say no fucking hard words, okay? Anyways, he says you need to fucking do that and, 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 and put people in specialized units. So if you have treasury people, they should only do treasury. They could do accounts receivables, they could do accounts payables, they could do payroll, yes. If you have a sales team, they should, you know, setting, closing, et cetera, okay? So what happened is we set up the org board and seven different divisions and people started getting compartmentalized and then fucking, I went from six figures to a quarter million to fucking half a million dollars per month just by new information, okay, just by new information. Uh, this, guy, this guy here, Shakir, Shaq, I talk about him a lot. He gave me uh, new information. It was, you guys heard the story about Shaq? Anybody? No? Okay, watch this. So I, uh, my, my daughter is about to be born, my, my three-year-old, so you're talking about about four years ago. And I gave this guy 25 Gs. He thought I was full of shit. His name is Shakir. This guy's made, at this point, over $50 million on the internet. He has more plaques than me. Not Sha Shakir Neal. Okay, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, who said funnels.com? Funnels.com, you know that, okay. So, anyways, now, hey, Sha Mike, why, why, why do you want to meet me? Dude, I want to do what you're doing. I want to do exactly what you're doing. Okay, good. What's the price? 25K, cool. I'm going to go to the bank right now, I'm going to wire the money. He thought I was full of shit because I didn't try to twist his arm. I didn't try to lowball him. I went to the fucking bank, dropped the money, boom, done. 30 minutes, done. Got back on, let's go. So I redeemed two meetings from him. I paid $25,000 for six meetings. Why? Because I'm looking for new information. Okay? I only redeemed two. Within the second meeting, I was driving in uh, Fashion Valley by the Best Buy. I'm in the car. My wife, Diane, is here. My daughter, Juliana, is there. We only had one baby at the time. And he says, Mike, let me talk to you. And I'm driving. Okay? It's like a weekend because I'd be at the office. And he's like, yo, Mike, uh, Got to be honest with you. I'm like, cool, tell me. He's like, dude, you're, never, you're not that good at ads. I had an ad agency. I worked with over 1,000 trainers and gym owners. We're making a quarter million at this point, over a quarter million per month, cash collected. He said, Mike, you're never going to be uh, uh, Russell Brunson. He's like, your, your, your marketing's okay, but you're, 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 it's, it's okay. He's like, you don't have talent like Russell Brunson. He told me that, okay? And he's like, you're never going to be Dan Henry or Billy Jean. You're never going to be uh, Kevin David. Okay, and, and like my wife's there. I'm just like feeling a certain type of way. Like, what the fuck's this motherfucker getting at? You know what I'm saying? Like, you better go to the UK and fight that motherfucker. That's why you still used to fight. I don't have to fight no more, but I used to. Thank you. Anyways, so now he's telling me th these things. I'm like, what the fuck's he talking about? So he's just like, you're not good at funnels. You're not good at ads. You're not good at marketing. I'm like, okay, 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 okay. He's like, well, Mike, uh, we are exceptional at, he's like, I've been in the room with Jordan Belfort, Wolf of Wall Street. I've been in the room with Grant Cardone. I've been, I know Dan Locke personally, if you guys know Dan Locke, the closer. He's like, you have something unique and different about sales in this space. He's like, I've been around who's who in, in the closing space. There's nobody like you. Uh, let me rewind that like two days before. I did a sales meeting for his existing staff because I, I knew his shit was not that good in sales. Because I knew his appointment center didn't follow up to me, didn't you know check on me, et cetera. So I I I said, what 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 are you what are you getting at? He's like, Mike, stop the fucking ad agency, stop that. He's like, what you need to do is go partner up with the world's biggest online coaches, people like me and above. I said, okay. He's like, what you got to do is create an academy. What you got to do is certify them, teach them all your processes, show them exactly what you do, and on the front end you have a closer academy. And on the back end, you have a staffing agency. He's like, if you do that, you're going to fucking take off. I was like, what the fuck? I make a quarter million dollars a month. We launched Closer Academy August 2020. I made a million dollars in the first month off that new offer. A million fucking dollars. What's the point? The point is I got new information. That's why we're here. We're looking for data. We're looking for information. It's always been like one or two liners that has just catapulted me. You're not the marketing guy. You're the closer guy. Fuck, that makes so much sense. And I turned that, and now you fast forward, that offer's done over $30 million. And I was already doing okay, but I was like an overnight success at that time that took fucking, what, 10 years up until that point. Okay, you guys tracking? Yeah. 
Okay, good. So you guys know the importance of information. Uh, 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 um. Liam, if, if, and I'm not that cool. Okay, thank you, thank you. Would you pay $5,000 if you could do like the Matrix? Neo's there, he's about to fly off the building with the helicopter. He doesn't know how to do the, the helicopter. And they're like, dit, 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 and he's automatically like the fucking helicopter pilot. If we could just download my information on sales and business, would you pay $5,000 for that? Instantly? Yeah. Okay, cool. Okay, I know you're gonna pay for my looks, but okay. <laughs> my clothes really kinda. Would you pay, pay $10,000 for Mark Cuban, the owner of the Dallas Mavericks? Long time billionaire Shark Tank. Okay, good. We all could do that. So uh, here's a quote. It says, data is the new oil. Data is the new oil, right? It's, 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 it's content and, and, and uh, programming. Okay, so um, let me see what else I got. Eh, 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 eh. Let me, okay, let me tell you my little story, and we're going to get into the material. Uh, who here knows about positive, negative, and right? A couple people? People in the academy? Okay, no one from the inner circle? Okay, good. Perfect. Okay, so watch this, Consuela. Positive, negative, right? You hear me talk about this? Okay, the river. Okay, so um, it's me, Louis Torres, and, and Leanne. We're here. We're all hanging out. We're like at a little camping spot. Me, Louis, and Leanne. We're right here. Okay, so now um, imagine there's this gushing river. Everybody pay very close attention. There's this gushing river. Like if I took a, a leaf and dropped it, Okay, like there's, this thing is crazy. I'm on one side of the riverbed with my two friends. On the other side of the riverbed is all of life's gems. Pot of gold, your, your, your mama's retired over there, that white picket fence is over there, the house on the lake or the house on the beach. It's you with a six pack, like everything you want. Because, well, I'm here with Louis, Leanne, okay, and myself, and there's a big ass river, and then on the other side is all of life's gems. Everything we want. Freedom, happiness, abundance, health, all that shit. So now, I'm going to pick on myself. We're, I'm with Louie Lee. I'm like, fuck, look, you see that? I go up to the river, Alistair. I'm like, yeah, I ain't doing that shit. It is not worth my life. It's not, like, to go get that, it's not worth my life. So in that, we're talking about positive, negative, and right. That wouldn't represent the negative person. So I, what I do is I bounce. Hey, you guys, good luck. You can have it. I ain't doing that shit. Peace. All right, Louie, hit me up if you're still alive. Okay, okay, you know what I'm saying? No cell phone service, okay? So now, that represents the quitter. This is the person that gives up before they ever even started. This is the person that wanted to do their corporate, leave their corporate job, create that business they never started. I quit. Fuck this, I ain't, I ain't doing that, peace, okay? Louie, on the other hand, okay, he's strong. He's from New York. Louie's a gangster, okay? And Louis's like, Leon, I don't know what the fuck Mike's problem is, but I'm six foot one. I'm an athlete. I know what it is. I don't give a shit about that river. I'm going to go back, and I'm going to go into that river like a fucking shark, and I'm going to go get those gems. Watch. Leon's like, damn. So Louis's like psyching himself up. Come on, come on, come on. So he gets, you know, a little 20 feet running start. He runs up to the river, hits it, bam, like a shark, like he said he would. Leon's like, fuck. And now he's, he's going, he's going. Leon's like, damn, Louie, okay? Go Louie. Go Louie. He's fucking going. He's about, to get, he's about to get it. And what happens is the river grabs him, pulls him down, rolls him, and then a mile down the way, it drowns him. That represents the positive person. There are so many people on the internet that have positive memes. There's people that you know, and we've been like this, some of the coolest, nicest, friendly, kind people that would give the shirt off their back and are like, dude, I don't know why Wendy has so much bad luck. She's such a sweetheart. Oh, fuck, she's, she's dating the wrong guys. Oh, that son of a bitch messed up her credit. Or some of the nicest people that you know literally are struggling in life. And what I'm getting at is we talked about the negative person, the quitter, me. We're talking about the positive person, Louie, but what Louis did is he disobeyed the river of life. The river of life is unbiased. It doesn't give a fuck about what set you claim, your ethnicity, your religious beliefs, male, female, gender, sexual preference, orientation. It doesn't, it doesn't give a shit. It's unbiased. The river doesn't give a shit. 
So Louis could hype himself up all he wants. The little kid on the internet, on Instagram is like, I'm fucking going to kill it, man. I'm fucking a baller. But what's happening is most people are going to that river. They're disobeying that river of life. And they're, they're not doing anything but getting pulled down, getting rolled, and getting fucking drowned. Does that make sense, y'all? So for a long time, I've been a hustler. For a long time, I've been fucking a guy that can go 14, 16, 18 hours. For a long time, I've been positive. For a long time, I've been talking my shit. But I was still struggling because there was something that wasn't right about what I was doing. And I kept going that river and I kept fucking, you know, drowning. Okay? Everybody good so far? Okay, cool. Um, so now, Leanne's left. Mike's a fucking quitter. Negative. Okay. Uh, Louis the positive guy. Disobeyed the river. Drowned. Leanne's like, I got this. Le Leanne jumps in her Tacoma, okay? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Tacoma. She goes down the street, comes back. When Leanne comes back, she has rope around her arm, right? Leanne comes back, and now she has a life vest on. Leanne comes back, and she got this fucking canoe. She's dragging the fucking canoe, okay? When Leanne comes back, she has a paddle. Leanne's like, okay, so Mike's the quitter, got that. Uh, Louis motivated, but didn't do the right thing. So you, she wants to do the right thing. Positive, negative, right. Leanne ties the rope around her waist, takes the rope, takes it right there, and ties it up to that little tree stump. Boom, secure, just in case. Leanne goes to the river with a canoe, with a paddle, with the life vest, and she's not positive. She's, you have to be positive, first off. You ain't going to be successful if you ain't positive. But it's about doing what's right. So now she approaches this, this river, not positive or negative, but right. She gets on that thing, and she starts going, and she starts going, and she starts going, and she starts going, and she starts going. And eventually she gets on the other side of the riverbed, and she goes, fuck. Thank you for all this freedom, financial freedom. My daughter's doing really well, et cetera. You guys get that? Yes. Okay. So the reason why I tell you that long-ass story is because I want to tell you the importance of information. For the long time, I was positive. For, well, I was negative. Then I was positive, but I was still wasn't doing the right shit. So me, I am seeking truth in the universe. Okay, this is why I study billionaires today. I'm looking for the right information. The right information could fucking, boom, set you free. The wrong information can kill you. Okay, everybody good? Okay, good, perfect. So uh, um, here's one of my quotes. It says, the secret to success is having the right information and operating on the information. Okay, that's why when I have coaches and mentors, I don't try to fight them. You want to write this down, too. 90% of good coaching is counterintuitive. Write that one down. 90% of good coaching is counterintuitive. Okay, uh, I'm going to pick on him, and when he comes here, I'm going to pick on him, too. Because, well, where the fuck is Dexter? He, 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 he want to be Dexter, right? So imagine you're, 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 you're a personal trainer, and you have a client, and all they do is eat fast food every day. All they do is fucking eat, drink milkshakes every day, and they don't, they don't want to work out. And now the trainer's like, no more fast food, you know, no more fucking milkshakes, start working out. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to be weird. It's counterintuitive. So that's what coaches do. They kind of get you to help operate different. You see what I'm saying? So the secret to success is having the right information, operating on the information. The key word is right, just like the river of life. Okay? Successful people operate different than non-successful people. I could talk about it for 10 hours. Okay? Any questions before... I go on to like the bulk of what I want to cover. Any questions? Okay. So now, I'm going to give you guys uh, my biggest influences on my way from broke to become a legit eight-figure earner. This is, this is what molded me. Okay. So the first guy is Tom Hopkins. Besides Louie, does anybody know who Tom Hopkins is? You know Tom Hopkins? Who's Tom Hopkins? Tom Hopkins? Oh, I saw him with the chair on the academy. Yeah. Salesperson, super good at it. He's a triple OG in sales. He does question-based selling, which is what we do here. He's been mentors to people like Grant Cardone, uh, someone I you know looked up to many years, Hector Lamarck, some, someone I've looked up to. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you the top 10 principles I've gained from my biggest influences, because we're doing mental tuning today. Okay, y'all ready? So let's talk about sales. I don't really talk about sales a whole lot with, with the inner circle, but we're going to talk about it. It says, number one, there's a basic truth in sales. There's a basic truth. It says, if I say it, they tend to doubt it. If they say it, it's true. The key is to take any statement of fact and see how to turn 
it into a question. Don't tell people, ask people guiding questions. What does that mean? Besides Louis. What does that mean? Somebody. Anybody? If you believe that what we know is true, then there must be some logical progression as to how you arrive at that conclusion. Okay. So I want to ask you the questions that lead you down the logical path that arrives to the only conclusion that could be true, which is that you need to buy this product in order to achieve what you want. Bingo. Absolutely. This is what my new guys do. And they're going to be ringing bells all day. This is what my new guys do. Hey, it's the Academy. It's going to change your life. Well, I'm not sure. Yo, you have to do this because this thing is, is incredible. It's changed so many lives. It's changing my life. And it's going to change. The, the new guy is telling, the new guy or girl is telling them, you need to do this, and here's why. You need to do this. Okay, what a professional does is take a, what does it say? It says take a statement of fact. Okay, so this thing has fucking helped people fucking make millions of dollars for sure. So let me ask you a question, Alistair. Okay, so... Um, you know, I met Clay today, and when he set us up, he says that you're, you're serious, not curious about making six figures. Is, is that accurate? Yes. Okay, great. And he says, and I'm looking at the notes here, and I quote, you'll do whatever it takes to make six figures ethically. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, outstanding. And, uh, and I know you're serious, bro, but um, just, just so I know we're on the same page, I'm talking to the right guy. On a scale from one to 10, uh, about how serious you are, how committed you are, is it safe to say that you're a 10 out of 10 that you're all in and you're ready to get to the next and make six figures. Is that accurate? Yeah, that's accurate. Oh, okay, beautiful, outstanding. Okay, good. And then, um, you know, obviously we're gonna make you an offer at the end of this, but I'm gonna show you what we do, how it's worked for so many different people, young, old, middle-aged, et cetera. And if what I show you makes sense and it's affordable, you'd be open to the idea of getting started today. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Okay, beautiful, outstanding. Okay, you see the difference? Yeah, yeah. Right? So I'm saying the same thing versus it's gonna change your life. It, I'm asking, Questions to warrant a yes, okay? So that's, that's what we do here. Okay, so we're talking about sales, we're talking about mindset, all this good stuff. I'm just giving you some of the biggest things I've learned from, you know, my mentors. Okay, it says, um, the top questions you can ask in sales. This is from Tom Hopkins. It's called a tie-down question. Definition, it's defined as a question at the end of a sentence that demands a yes response. I just did that right now. Okay, it'd be a great uh, example. Uh, 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 um, so I'm just going to go like this. What, what I like to do is, is I call, my favorite thing is, it's called, um, if I could, would you? Right? If I could, would you? Hey, Consuela, if I can help you grow your business, if I can actually close your deals, if I can represent you in the brightest light with your company, and I can actually deliver on what, I, what I'm promising, you'd be open to the idea of actually partnering up with me today. Is that right? Yeah. Okay, beautiful. So that's a tie down. So in sales, we want yes. Yes means more, uh, you know, the likelihood of, of closing. The opposite would be no. Would you be open to rock? No. Okay, you, you, do you want to change your business? No. Okay, so we, you got, got that, right? Yeah. It says, as a general rule, do not use more than two tie downs in a presentation because it starts to get gimmicky and you don't want to like insult people's intelligence because it, you're just fucking, it, it's just not cool. Here we go, the alternate of choice question. A question that has two answers. Either answer they choose is a minor agreement of the main decision. The key is that they must know the answers and the answers must confirm that they're going ahead. So I do this to my wife. When I started learning this about 15 years ago, I, I, I tell my wife, I trick her ass all the time in a good way. I'd be like, hey, Diana, so, you know, Mexican sounds good. Uh, let me ask you a question. Would you, you know, do you rather go to Mexican Old Town Cafe or Roberto's, which makes sense? And she's like, Mexican Old Town Cafe. Either way, I want Mexican food. And we're gonna go, and, and it's, just, it's just like psychology almost. Hey, Diana, you know, hey, listen, you know, do you wanna do A, B, and C? Hey, hey Diana, for my birthday, you know, um, you know, I wanna go travel. Hey, listen, would you rather go to Mexico or would you rather go back to New York City? And she's gonna pick one. You see what I'm saying? Yes. Right? So, how could we use that in a, in, a, in a real sell cycle? Okay, hey, Mrs. Jones, super excited to have you on board. Let me ask you a question. Do you wanna pay in full or do you wanna break some installments? Uh, what do the installments look like? As soon as she went there, she just bought. Do you understand? Either way, you're picking one. All right? Everybody good? The next thing is called a porcupine question. The technique, this technique, the technique of answering a question with a question, which helps the prospect take possession. Okay? So uh, uh, a porcupine question. So the prospect, <laughs> the prospect would say, hey, Louie, can I break this up in installments? 
And the response is, would you like to break this up in installments? So it's a porcupine question because they throw you the question and like a porcupine, you get it and you throw it back. Okay? So uh, Mrs. Real Estate Agent, hey, do you think the families would be open to leave the, the playground in the back? Would you like us to leave the playground in the back? Because when, when they said that, they just bought. Okay? Cool? Everybody good? Okay, so I'm going to go a little faster. Um, if you go look at the Closer Academy, you go look at my demos, you'll see that this is real. I don't use the word contract. I use the word agreement, right? You've never, go watch my live closes. You'll see me close $100,000 deals, $50,000 deals, $10,000 deals, $1,000 deals. There's, I, I have, it says a quarter million in closes. It's, it's, it's more than a half a million. And you'll see I never use these words. Why? Because I learned this from Tom Hopkins. The difference with me of watching the YouTube video is like, I'm like intently looking for that one line like I did with Shaq that's going to change my fucking life. So uh, Tom Hopkins, number three, fear words. Every word you say either has a positive effect or a negative effect. Do not use these seven words. Don't say cost or price, say investment. When I hear my new guys say contract, I know they haven't done enough development yet because I don't, I don't say that shit. That's a bad word to me. Don't say down payment, say initial investment. Don't use monthly in payment, say monthly investments. Okay? Don't use the word contract. Use the word agreement or paper or form. Don't use the word buy. Use the word own. This is when you're closing a deal. Tom Hawkins is the, the sales guy. Don't say sell or be sold. Get them evolved. Okay? You don't, want, you don't want to sell anybody nothing. You don't want to be like, I just sold you. I want to get you involved with this. Okay? Don't use the word sign it. You did your presentation, you did the stack. They're about to get started. Don't say, hey, sign right here. I just need your authorization. Go look at my closes. You'll hear me say that. Dude, send over the agreement. Just need your authorization. Like, Mike, like, sign it? Sure. Okay, you guys got that? Good? Yeah. Authorize it, approve it, or endorse it. Okay, don't conduct demos, conduct presentations. I talk <laughs> about the academy. I could come up here and give a boring-ass presentation and do a boring-ass demo, but you know I'm going to go here bring a lot of energy, hopefully bring some charisma, some swag, and fuck it, I'm gonna put on a show. Okay, I could talk about that, but you guys get the idea. All right, some theatrics. Number five, it says you can expect, expedite the sales process if the prospect is ready. Pay attention to the language of the prospect and even closer attention to the porcupine questions. The prospect may say, how soon can we get started? And you'd respond, let's get you started now. Do you have 20 more minutes? Okay, I can talk about that, but that's pretty straightforward. Good? Yeah. Cool? Okay, let's move on. The test close. Ooh, fuck. Shit. That won't give me chills. The test close. So I run a five-step sales process. Introduction, fact-finding, demo slash presentation, test close, and then the close. We all know the close, right? That's where you actually exchange service or product for dollars. That's the close. No close, nothing else matters. The test closed right before. I did my whole deal, and I just go, you know, Mrs. Jones, how does everything sound so far? You're a dog trainer. Mrs. Jones, you know, he's, he's really, he's never like that, Keith. Well, it's all good. You know, it, that's why you're here today, right? So let me ask you a question. How does everything sound so far? I, I love it. When they say I love it, that's a green light for you to proceed to the close. Okay? It's a temp check. Is the water cold or is the water warm? If the water's warm, then I can proceed. Okay, good? Everybody good? Okay, good. Uh, ask a reflex question. Ooh, fuck, this is good. During the close, when you're completing the paperwork, okay, so I, what I do is, and I haven't really seen too much people do this, we're filling out the paperwork, we're filling out the paperwork, I did the stack, you're gonna get this, and you're gonna get this offer, you're gonna get this, and we're gonna get this, you're gonna get the supervisor, you're gonna get this. Perfect. Have you heard enough to make a decision? Uh, let me ask you a question. You know, you wanna, you wanna, you wanna break this up and you wanna pay in full, you wanna, and I'm going to the paperwork now. So, hey, I'm so sorry, uh, what was the date again? Oh, today's the 22nd. Boom, outstanding. Okay, good. And uh, let me ask you a question. Uh, was it Visa, Mask, or American Express? It's a Visa, Mike. Okay, great. Uh, and is it your name on the card? Okay, good. And again, how do you spell your last name? That's what I always say. How do you spell your last name? Boom, okay, good. And now you're at the card number. You're about to put in 16 digits. Uh, I'm ready. And they're like, oh, right now? And you just do that same thing like, sure. Okay. So what I do is, let me ask you a question, is it Visa, Mask, or American Express? And it's, it's almost like they fucking become a, what do they, they call it, non-playable character, uh, NPG? NPC. NPC? It's like they become an NPC. Like they're, they're just, they don't even fucking know. 
You, you know what I'm saying? I seen a woman do so my boy Bruce is pulling up. And we went in, we went to go buy his wife, Victoria. He did. He went to go buy her some jewelry. And she's like, great. Do you want, a, you, want a, you want a bracelet or do you want a watch? She's like, a bracelet. She's like, okay, great. Do you like white gold or silver or you want gold? He's like, uh, gold. She's like, okay, great. Do you want like heavy links or small links? He's like, uh, uh, small links. She's like, okay, great. And then you want to have this like wrapped as a gift or you want her to see the box? He's like, uh, wrapped as a gift. Next thing you know, that motherfucker bought a $4,000 bracelet. And, and we walked out. I was like, man, you got to fucking play, fool. <laughs> But you, you, get, you get the idea? It's like very assumptive. Hey, do you want white gold or, uh, or, or gold? Uh, gold. Okay, good. What is the date? Visa, Mask, American Express. Visa. Okay, great. Is it your, name, your last name on the, uh, the card? Okay, great. How do you spell it? Okay, outstanding. Y you guys got that, right? Okay, good. Oh, dude, you, you guys are going to love this. It's, it's called Reduction to the Ridiculousness. Okay? And this is going to be good for people that are selling dog training. Very expensive. Because they're trying to make sense of, like, that big-ass investment you're about to, you know, sometimes we charge 2500 3500 4500 5500 Dylan, what is your biggest package, Dylan? 50 k Okay, that's, that's a significant amount of money, right? Okay? Everybody remember this one. Reduction to the dic ridiculousness. It's, used, it's to be used when money is a concern. All they see is that big old $50,000. All they see is $4,500 to train Fido. You take the amount of money, you divide that over the years or length they will enjoy the product, you divide that by the annual amount, and you divide that by the daily amount, then you address and confront the daily cost to utilize the product. Okay, you guys ready? I'll start to make some money. It's like five years ago. I did something stupid as hell, and I have a camera guy. I bought a hard-ass mattress for $7,000. I walked, I was like, give me the most expensive one you want that you got, like a dumbass. I didn't even lay on it. I took it home. I was like, this fucking sucks. <laughs> you know? This woman did this to me. My, you know, she did. She handled my wife. So the mattress is $7,000, okay? Watch this. Uh, okay. You guys see, see my screen? Okay, here we go. Let me see. Let me see. So the mattress is $7,000, okay? This woman told me thirty year lifetime guarantee, okay? So we're going to divide that by 30 years, okay? Cool? You guys got that? I'm going to divide that. She's doing it on the calculator. calculator. This woman is like skilled as hell. I'm going to divide that by 365 days a year. You guys got that? So uh, Mrs. Barron, you know, I understand that it's, a, it's an expensive mattress. I totally get that. But let me ask you a question. Is it worth spending $60 a day over the next 30 years to 100% to have the best sleep of your life? Well, let me, let me try one more time. Is it worth 60 cents? The cost less than a freaking water bottle. Is it worth 60 cents to 100% have the best sleep of your life over the next 30 years? I never thought about that. Okay, great, sign right here. It's actually a pretty decent mattress, but you guys, you guys get that? Yeah. Yeah. Right? Okay, so let's, let's just do something else. Keith, what's your go-to package? 60 to 100, you, you, you know, I, I, I totally get that. And sometimes people say the same thing. Uh, but, you know, when you came in, you're talking about, you know, Apollo was pulling grandma down, you know, uh, the, the sidewalk. And you said that, you know, it's tough during the holiday seasons because he's, you know, jumping on family members. And he, when you put him up, he's, he's barking. So how old did you say he was? He's, he's one? Okay, get that. Still, you know, not even teenager yet. So uh, it is 60 to 100. Okay, so let's just say on average dogs live 15 years. Okay, good. So you're talking about 442. Okay, let's divide that by 365. Uh, Mrs. Jones, let me ask you a question. If we can get Apollo obedient, listening, not you know having Grandma go down the you know the sidewalk, not worrying about having Christmas out of your house again, not worrying about him chewing up all the shoes. Let me ask you a question. Over the next 15 years, having Apollo, Apollo, an obedient, nice boy, for the next 14 years, is it worth a dollar and 20 cents? We can agree on that, right? Okay, outstanding. Do you see how lethal that is? It's fucking lethal. Yo, Henry, I need power. That's, that's cold, right? It is true. You know, I already knew this, and the woman said to me, I was like, fuck, buy that fucking mattress. Uh, for real. Okay, so um, Tom Hopkins, do the most productive thing at any give, every given moment. I'm like a crackhead for production. 
Okay, on rare occasions, I, I sit in line, I'll go to the DMV. Instead of shitting, sitting in the shitty ass California DMV for three hours, I'm on my phone, I'm talking, tapping the sales vice president, I'm talking John Pena, I'm creating content, I'm hitting Henry. Self-explanatory, do the most productive thing possible at every given moment. Yes, you gotta rest. Yes, you need to chill out. Yes, you need to decompress. But I, I, I don't sit idle. I never sit idle. Okay, cool, everybody good? Okay, uh, uh, um, number 10, and last thing for Tom Hawkins. When somebody asks you a question about your ask, especially pertaining to the words that Tom recommends, simply smile and say, sure. I kind of touched on this before. You ask, I need your authorization on the agreement and the prospect responds, you mean sign it? Give it up, give it up for them, give it up. You simply smile and nod your head and say, sure. So I would, I would, I would send over an agreement, because we don't send over contracts. I would send over an agreement, Dylan, and I'd be like, all right, that's in your inbox. You got that? Perfect. Hey, uh, all I need from you is your authorization. And they're like, Mike, so you want me to sign it? And I'm looking at them like they're crazy. I'm like, sure. Do you get it? Like, I'm, I'm, I'm like flipping on them. Like, I'm like, so you want me to sign this contract? And you're like, I'm like, sure. It's fucking nuts. Okay, good? Everybody good? Any questions before we move on to the next thing? Okay, good. So GC, I don't talk a lot about GC uh, these days, uh, but uh, I'm, just, I'm gonna kind of blow past this one. Let me see what's up with this. Okay, beautiful, good. So uh, GC, first rule of success is showing up. I remember being in high school and I was new to wrestling, and I remember the guy was like the best guy in, in the league that I was trying to wrestle with. He was varsity, I was a freshman. And I remember, fuck man, I was nervous. I used to be good at football, but I was nervous. And I, I, I made an excuse to, to uh, the coach that I had a dentist appointment. And I didn't. I, I, it's hard to me for many years and I, because I, I don't identify with that. I think I feel like I'm rough, feel like I'm tough, feel like I can kick some ass. I called my aunt and it's like, I told her to come pick me up. What's the point, I didn't show up. Kevin Montgomery, this guy was the worst fucking closer this company's ever seen, okay? Clay Connor too, he just kept showing up. Kevin Montgomery, Louis, we got closers on our team that do over 300,000 cash collected. Kevin did like 336, broke, broke Casey Cox's record, really broke Casey Cox's record, and all they did is kept showing up. They're not the smartest, I'm not the smartest, they're not the smartest, but they just keep showing up. So first rule of success is show up. You don't gotta be great, you don't gotta be fucking you know, phenomenal, just show up. Show up, okay? The first rule of selling, GC, always, always, always agree. Not one always, 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 always agree. 6,500 for board of training, are you, that's a lot of money. Hey, listen, the opposite would be, no it's not, because we do this and we do this and we do this and now I'm back at telling. And, and the guy down the street charges more and I know that because we actually know the guy down there. No, 6,500 for board of training. Keith, are you kidding me? That's a lot of money. Hey, listen, I'm with you. You're right, it is a lot of money. But let me ask you a question. You know, when you came to me, were you more focused on like value or were you, and, and get results or like were you trying to get the cheapest show in town? Results, okay, great. And then you handle it from there. So don't get combative. Go straight to agreement. It doesn't mean you're lying, you're acknowledging their view. You're right. Okay, good? Okay, GC, number three. All I'm doing is giving you the people that have molded me. I'm, not, I'm gonna get off sales pretty soon. I'm going to talk about the people that have molded me over the last 15 years. Okay, number three. Selling is a way of life. Everything is a sell, sell or be sold. Louis, remember we went to uh, your joint and it was like the happening spot of Charlotte and there's a big ass line? And you're like, fuck, we can go there, bro. But this is where like where the ballers go, NBA ballers, footballers. And what do you know? We pulled up, there's a big ass line. I was trying to prove a point. I was trying to be cool. I was like, dog, I ain't waiting no fucking line, bro. I went up to the bouncer and I was like, hey, bro. Uh, what I gotta do to get in right now? He's like, you gotta get in line with everybody else. I was like, no, I, I got that, I see the lines right there. Big ass line, right? But let me ask you a question. What do I have to do? Like, like what do I gotta do to get in? She flash a little $200, $200. What, you tell, what do I gotta do? He's like, the two of y'all? I was like, yeah, he's like, come in. <laughs> do you remember that shit? I sold that motherfucker. I, Dylan is in town, not this Dylan, another Dylan, it's about three years ago, Dylan Cadulo, three years ago. And we, you know, come to San Diego, red carpet, let's go do lunch, whatever, have a drink or two or three. 
And uh, you know, they go in and they're like, fuck, Dylan doesn't have his ID. I'm parking the car. You guys go inside and get the table. It's, it's about eight of us, 10 of us. I'm, I'm like, so like, oh, this is a game for me. I was like, well, motherfucker said you can't go in there. I said, cool. I said, hey, big dog. Hey, man, my little brother said he can't get in. Like, like what do we got to do to get in? He's like, all right, just, he's not going to drink. I was like, he ain't going to drink. <laughs> Promise you. He's like, all right, just, just keep it cool. I was like, cool. I turned back and did not winked. I'm not here to take advantage. I'm not here to cut lines. I'm not, what I'm saying, what I'm telling you, selling is a way of life to get you want. If you can sell and close deals, you can have the husband of your dreams, the wife of your dreams. You can have the career. You can have whatever you want. And I don't, I don't take advantage. Okay, another thing, Mexican Old Town Cafe. I go there on average every other week for the last, since, since I've been with my wife, 15 years. I've been going there fucking 15 years. I know no one's been to that place more than me in the last 15 years. It's impossible. There's no way. I, I'm there every other week. We walk in, and uh, we have some guests in town, and Nate from Canada came. And I'm like, dude, this is my joint Mexican food in San Diego. And um, we walked in. They sat us at a table, a little janky-ass table. I was like, fuck that. We need to go sit at that round table. Okay? So it's the four of us. It's me, Juliana, Diana, and Nate. The woman comes up. She's like, oh, sorry, you can't sit here. Okay, okay cool. Tell me why. Because this is a table for five or more, five to six. I was like, cool. I said, uh, that's not going to happen. Let me talk to the manager. Manager comes. I'm not here to take advantage. I've given them more fucking money than anybody in 15 years. The fuck? Of course I should sit here. <laughs> We're one person shy. <laughs> Comes here. Uh, yep, yeah, uh, sir, uh, I know you talked talk to my staff. I know. Listen, here's the deal. You know me. I've been coming here, it's like 10 years. I've been coming here every other, every other week. You always see me for the last 10 years. My bro, Nate from Canada, I told him this is the best Mexican food in San Diego. And I know this is the spot for us. So with that said, would you be open to the idea of us sitting here? She's like, Absolutely. And I can give you guys other examples, but I always get what I fucking want in life. I'm just telling you, because I'm, you, you get it? Thank you. Thank you. What's the point? Sales is everything. Sales is a way of life. Uh, you, you need to get the right vehicle. Uh, I'm leaving corporate. This is 2013, 2014. I was a president out of college, believe it or not. Apparently I don't do background checks. Hey, who knew? Anyways, it's fucking crazy. I'm 20 year, 29 years old, smoking weed to all my homies on the weekend and shit. I'm the president. Walk up with Hugo Boss. Hey, good to meet ya. Mike Barron. Hey, brother. Hey, lose weight. <laughs> so anyways, school gets shut down. I go back in the corporate world for the first time in my career. It was tough for me to get a job. I was like combating with, I became a president, so I was going against other people with fucking PhDs and 20 years experience, and I was just, on paper, I didn't compete with that. I called Grant. Literally on the phone, he was on a live YouTube podcast doing his show. I said, hey, Grant, um, I got to track it down. And we're, we're, I'm talking to Grant directly. I said, hey, man, I'm going to these interviews, and I find myself too energetic, too, too, too freaking turned up, too excited. Like, should I turn it down the interviews? He's like, Mike, you don't need to fucking, this is, he's talking to me. You don't need to turn it down. You need to get in the right vehicle. You need to find a vehicle that can channel a guy like you so that you can actually take off. I said, Fuck. What are you thinking? He's like, dude, when are you going to bone up, jump on a flight and come to Miami? And I was there. That was Thursday. I was there on a Tuesday. So you got to get in the right vehicle. You're right. It's uh, no, no, no bullshit, no shit talking. It's going to be hard for Kevin Montgomery. He makes over $30,000 as a closer. It's going to be hard for that guy to go to the corporate world to make that kind of money. It's just not going to happen. What's the point? He's in the right vehicle, right? So these are things I learned from GC. Okay, cool. Number five, who's got your money? Who's got your money? Okay, I'm not gonna pay for my new Lamborghini. Okay, uh, someone else's. <laughs> okay, I'm just not. Okay, the Rivalto, someone else's. So yes, we provide product and services. Yes, we train dogs. Yes, we people get we get people fit. Yes, we do real estate and all that good shit that we do. But instead of just selling, oh here's a prospect. You you, you should be able to fucking look, dude. I got ten people right now I can call and they got your money and you sell them your shit. So we can get in more of that, but you guys got that. Uh, I just talked about this. You're not gonna pay for that thing you're going for. You're not gonna pay for that, that home you want. You're not gonna pay for that beachfront property. Alistair, you're not gonna pay for that fucking McLaren. Someone else is. Once you wrap your head around that, someone else, someone else is gonna fund that. Someone else funded this building, okay? So someone else is gonna pay for that thing you're going for. Number seven, money is all made up. This is one of the biggest things I learned. 
The money is it's all made up. They print the shit. They fucking print it. Money's made up. It says just add a zero. It's all the same effort. I was working my ass off living in shit, making eight, what, $22 an hour, living in an 800, uh, 800 North Park, $800 a month North Park apartment. I was working my ass off when I went to that $3,200 luxury apartment in Mission, uh, Mission Valley. I was working my ass off when I had an E-class. I was working my ass off when I got the Lambo. I was working my ass off when I mo moved into a multi-million dollar house. I was working my ass. It's all the same shit. So I can play the game here or I can play the game here. It's all the same shit. When you play the game up here, though, it's more risk, more reward. It's just at, it's just at a zero. When I was shocked when Nick Legend invested 25K to Ty Lopez, that was nothing. We had a, we had a sales rep from Tony Robbins. He was here two days ago. He was in the back with me and John Pena. John Pena knows him. I was like, bring him over. I want to meet him. I was like, bro, I'm going to keep it real. I'm looking to plug into source. I need data. I need information. What is Tony's best package? He's like, his best package is $100,000. You go to every event, all the retreats at his house, his private island. He, you, you can see him. He'll break bread with you. It's a small exclusive group. It's like 12 to 18 people. It's his highest thing. Okay? I was like, cool. Send John Payne to the paperwork. He still hasn't sent it. And he texted me today to wish me happy birthday. And I just met the guy. I'm not worried about $100,000. It's, it's all made up. It, 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 it's, it's an illusion. I'm not worried about 100,000. I'm worried about 100 million, right? So if I can get that information to get that, then I'll do that. I don't think about how much it costs or what's the investment. I think about what's the opportunity. What can I become? What can I create? Who can I influence? You see what I'm saying? It's, all, it's just made up. Stop going to the fucking menu and not buy that steak dinner and you get the chicken breast because the steak dinner is 90 and the chicken breast is 35. It's not you. It's not why you're upon this planet to be afraid to buy the fucking steak dinner. You got, is, that, is that real for y'all? It, it's, just, it's just fucking money. It's just money. You're a human being. Number eight, the most important thing you can invest into is yourself. You can't destroy it. So GC told me, I used to be there when it was small, eight people. We're doing more money today than GC was making when I was over there back in 2015. And he says, Mike, if you're not a multimillionaire yet, the most important thing is, to, to, the most important thing to invest into is yourself. It's not real estate. It's not the new app. It's you because they can't take it from you. They can't take it from you. The most important thing you can invest in is yourself. That's why I'm sitting down with the Tony Robbins guy two days ago. I was like, dude, what's your highest shit? Send it to John Pena. It's nothing, it's just money. Everyone here is afraid of money. It's fucking nuts. Wealth is created through cash flowing assets, okay? So I, in the last two years, became an investor, apartment complexes. I make about $12,000 a month passively, Netflix money. So everything I learned from GC is like make money, Store money, make money, store money, invest money. So the real way to get wealth is you have to have cash flowing assets. Ideally, in my opinion, real estate, because you can't you can't destroy it. And like the like the value of the dollar that's going down, inflation, real estate continues to go up. Yes, there's spikes in the market and all that, but like it's never gonna go down down, right? The my dream home, right there on Mount Soledad, in its uh, it Hillside Drive. When I graduated high school, it was 1.4 million. Now it's 17 million. So imagine I bought that back then, I would have just made what? 15 million dollars, 15 and a half million dollars? You see what I'm saying? Right, so what I'm doing right now is I, I need to get my earned income higher. I need to make more money, more money. I need to take it, I need to store it, and I need to store it and I need to invest it into good properties, like Ar Armand's gonna help me do, okay? And that's what I'm doing over the next five years. I'm getting out this fucking rat race. Never gonna stop hustling, never gonna stop being on purpose, but I need to get off this fucking rat race where I'm just like training damn near time for dollars, even though we got a big ass team, okay? We have over 100 people. This is not even half our fucking team. We have 30 people in the Philippines alone. Number 10, you guys good? Everybody good? Y'all good? Okay. The biggest problem you'll face in business is obscurity. People don't know you, so they won't flow you. It's a noisy world, so you need to find a way to break through the noise and get attention, okay? That's what he told me. That's why I eat scorpions. You guys seen that? getting attention. It's crazy. Okay, it's fucking nuts. That's why we drive these Lamborghinis. Get attention. That's why Dylan chose to drive the, the new Cybertruck. Like, he ain't pulling up in no Prius. Okay, if he did, we'd jump him. Okay? <laughs> but he didn't. Okay? First you get attention, then you get haters, and then you get admiration. Has anybody not heard me talk about that? Okay. It's a noisy world. There's another guy that looks just like me, sounds like me, flexes like me. I need to fucking outstunt him. There's another dog trainer in Charlotte, North Carolina. You don't have to do what I'm doing, but you have to get attention. Whatever that means, you have to get attention, right? First you get attention, then you get haters. 
my, my, my fucking TikTok was blowing up two years ago because everybody was hating. That guy's full of shit. That thing's a rental. That's an Airbnb. That guy's, and now they can't really dispute it because it's been so long, right? So now the haters, you, gotta, you wanna write this down. The haters are your marketing team. The haters are your marketing team. Jason Tanaka, the haters are the ones that like you the most. Uh, okay, let me, we, let me break down what a hater is. Let me break down what a hater is real quick. So a hater, it, 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 they love you. I'm not, ki- I'm not kidding you. It's not like some fucking stuff I'm trying to like convince you on. The hater, what they're doing is they're, they're the person that gave up on their dreams and goals. They see you. I don't look like a typical CEO because I'm not doing that thing and he claims he is. There's no way in hell. I didn't do it, and he, that guy's doing it? There's no way in hell. Impossible. So let me make sense of this. This guy's a liar. This guy's a cheater. This guy's a fucking whatever the hell. This guy's a horrible person. Because they're trying to make sense of their situation. But they love you. Why? Because they have attention. They're the ones that watch. They're the ones that comment. They're the ones that tune in the most. They're the ones that share the damn thing. They're, versus the person that doesn't even you know, t- tune in. Okay? So I know what a hater is, so I don't even trip on the haters. I love the haters. If you go look at my thing, we used to have all my haters tagged on, a, on an Apple note, and we would tag them on every new post. Real shit. Keith, you see that? We, we would tag all the haters on every new post because I can, I can guarantee they're going to comment. And when they comment, the algorithm goes crazy. Right? So for, now go look at my IG. I, very seldom do I get hate. Louis, I built up a pretty big fan base in the, recently, you know? Recently, in the last 45 days, we, we got 30,000 followers. Like, it, we were getting fucking 1,500 followers a day. It's crazy. I, I can't, got so many damn birthday wishes, it's insane. And, like, it's everything we ever wanted. It's fucking nuts. First, you got to get attention. Then you're going to get the haters. And then you get admiration. I've had a p- couple people in this room. I'm not going to speak on who. Mike, how do you deal with that? Mike, this guy says, I'm fucking scum of the earth. Mike, this guy messaged my, my girlfriend says, your, your boyfriend's a piece of shit. How do you... Dude, haters are my marketing team. I love them. Keep, keep talking. Keep talking about me. Either way, you're tuning in. It's all good. Okay? Then you get the admiration. Cool? Okay. What, what, what's that? You, you got to get attention. You know what I call them? You know, here, here, here's my thing. It says, it says TikTok fans. I don't call them haters. And I got the list, and, and what happens is the hater doesn't have enough endurance as you. I'm going to continue forever because I'm on purpose. So now this person's sole freaking internet purpose is to hate on Mike or hate on Keith or hate on Louie or hate on Leanne or hate on Armand. They don't have the endurance. So what we'll do, we won't bully them. We'll tag them and be like, man, fuck you. I hate you. We'll tag them again. Man, fucking stop tagging me. I'm going to come to San Diego and kick your ass. Then we'll tag them. <laughs> they say that shit. Death threats and all. For real. Hey, stop. Hey, hey, hey. Stop tagging me. You're a fucking piece of shit. And eventually they stop. So we'll tag them. No response. We'll tag them one more time. No response. And then they're dead. So we just check them off. <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm not kidding you. This how, okay. Is that fucking crazy or what? The haters are your marketing team, man. I'm trying to tell y'all, your haters are your fucking marketing team. Henry, you got the wrong angle, dog. You know it should be in the camera right here, bro. Come on now. You know I'm trying to look like the young Denzel Washington. Stop playing with me, man. And you're saying that the haters are your marketing team, too, because everyone loves to like what they're saying, right? Then more people are going to be listening to what they say to the Right? Because it produces more in the audience. The algorithm likes the engagement. Okay. okay. Imagine I put up a post and there's zero comments, zero views. Imagine I got 20 haters that got fucking 40 comments and 1,000 views. So now the, the, the algorithm, whether it's Instagram, TikTok, says, oh, this is a person of interest. Look at the engagement. Let me take this and put it in front of more people. You see what I'm saying? Hey, you guys engage back with them? Oh, fuck yeah. Oh, yeah. We send like, eggplant emojis and all that. Yeah. <laughs> Suck on this one, man. Yeah, I'm telling you, bro. I'm telling you. That's what we, that's, that's what we do. You know what I'm saying? That's what we do. Henry, you've got to get some, some reels out, too, soon. I know you're working. Okay, cool. And then, uh, okay, we'll talk about that. So Holton Bugs, you probably never, no one's probably ever heard me talk about Holton Bugs. Holton Bugs at one point was the number one uh, multi-level marketer, network marketer. It's like Vima, it's like Mary Kay, and this is a guy I listened to for fucking many, many years. And this is what I learned from Holton Bugs: think bigger sooner, think bigger sooner. Okay, Casey Cox asked me this 
three years ago. Hey, Mike, Casey, I'm on your sales team. I know who you are, man. Uh, what would you say to your 20-year-old self? I said, bro, I, I would think bigger sooner. I would think bigger sooner. Anybody, young person, old person, that don't matter. Think bigger sooner. If you're not getting what you want in life, because it's the target's too small. The target's too fucking small. I'm going to tell you like this. I was 16 years old, working at McDonald's. All I wanted to do was become a team lead to make 15 more cents to get my car sooner. Did it. I, at the, the grocery store bagging, all I want to do is get to the meat department because at the time I could make $22 an hour and if I could do that, then I could fucking get my 64 Impala. I did that. Okay, I'm going to corporate. I want to be the best career advisor so that way I could actually become a director and make more money, have a better lifestyle, take care of my family, and I did that. Then right after that, I'm like, if I become a regional, I can make more money, have a better lifestyle, have you know, gainful employment, and I did that. I became a regional and then I'm like, fuck, I need to become a president, and I did that. But I was taking micro steps. Then I left corporate. I was like, fuck, I'm listening to all these guys. I could be a millionaire. Kind of did that too. My new goals I've been writing down over the last year and a half are, is that I'm a billionaire. So what's the point? If I start telling myself I'm a billionaire at 16 when I first started working in a normal job, I would have got there that much quicker. Yeah. So I'm going to challenge everybody here to think bigger sooner. Someone else is going to do it. Might as well be, will, will be you. Okay? You don't have a dog training facility. You have the number one dog training facility in Charlotte, North Carolina. You don't, you don't compete in, in, in real estate. You're the number one. Why not? Yeah. Fucking ball out. Let's roll. Think bigger sooner, okay? Another thing I learned from Holton Bugs, and, and, and just, for, just as a reminder, we're starting out with the mental tuning. It's going to get technical. We're going to talk about marketing and all that stuff, but I just wanted to give, I don't talk about this with the inner circle people. I'm giving you the stuff I did over the last 15 years and people I listen to to fucking, you know, become what we're doing right now. You need to become an artist, Okay, don't do presentations, be an artist, theatrics. Don't go on stage and be boring. Actually, do some sort of presentation. Okay, I'm gonna blow past that one. How you do anything is how you do everything. Most of us have heard that. How you do anything is how you do everything. I cannot do, go be a guest on a podcast. Henry, what do I say to every podcast I go to? What do I say to the host? I said, dude, don't wanna sound like an asshole. This will be the best podcast you've ever given. I promise you. Do I say it to every single person? What do those motherfuckers say when I get off? Okay. How can I go hard in closing and go weak on the podcast? How can I go good on the podcast and be, go home and be a shitty dad? How you do anything is how you do everything. How you brush your teeth, how you make your bed, how you love your spouse, how you show up to the gym. How you, like, you, 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 you want to go great in all areas. Not when the camera's there, not when people are looking. Not when nobody's fucking around. Okay? Sometimes people will come in the office late at night, nobody's here, and I'm in the back, and I'm working on myself, and I'm like fucking pacing, listening to Tom Brady, listen, and they're like, Mike, what the hell are you doing here? And I'm not doing it when there's a camera here. Okay? How you do anything is how you do everything. Go for excellence. Uh, it says, this is uh, Holton Bugs. It says, there was a two-year period in my life. Uh, I don't believe that there was anybody in the world in MLM, this is a quote from Holton Bugs, that was listening to tapes, informa uh, tapes, information that I was. I bought a pillow speaker because I got, to change, I got to change the way I'm thinking. I learned the subconscious mind doesn't sleep. So when I took that information, I started going to sleep with motivational tapes, with Holton Bucks, with Grant Cardone, with Tom Hawkins, with Hector Lamarck, with Russell Brunson. And I'm like, as I'm putting this together, I'm kicking myself because I'm like, fuck, I, I stopped doing that. I haven't done it in, in, in I'd say, years at this point. So I need to get back to that, okay? Like literally, you, 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 it, that's why I laid up the points of information and data. You see, Gazuela? He bought a pillow speaker at Radio Shack so he can listen to his, his affirmations. You're beautiful, you're smart, money comes to you, you attract fucking you know, abundance, health, wealth, et cetera. And I used to do that. And I wake up at three o'clock in the morning and be like, oh fuck, my ears hurt, turn it off. Seriously, so I'm gonna get back on that, starting today, okay? So um, this is Hol Holton Bugs. This is a quote. He says, thoughts determine and domino affect your speech. Your speech determines and domino affects your beliefs. Your beliefs domino affect your actions. Your actions domino your results. So my framework that I stole from Holton and made it my own, I sampled it. I say thoughts create actions. Jorge, actions create results. Results shape your reality. That's what I said. Thoughts create actions, actions create results, results shape reality. Okay, hey Jessica, what you got going on? Oh, it's finals. Okay, how you feeling? I feel good. 
except for my chem class. Oh, really? What's up? I'm not good at chem. You're fucking right. Look how you talk. That's why I don't talk negative. I'll say fuck you, but I don't talk negative. <laughs> okay? So it, it, it starts with your thoughts. It's all the thought. It, it, everything here. Like, I'm in the middle of COVID. I'm like, we're going to have a stage like Russell Brunson. It's going to be great with a great background, big STV, and we're going to have all these damn posters. It, was, it, it hit me one day. 15 years ago, I saw this pretty Mexican girl working at Circle K. I'm like, I like her. Yeah, I'm about to close that shit. What's happening? That was a thought. Then I took action. I actually went up to her and asked her on a date. I got some sort of result. We had a great time. Felt like I know this young lady for the whole, my entire life. You know, our reality is that we have three children, been together 15 years, happily married. Started with a thought. 3,500 years ago, 5,000 years ago, okay? Someone's in Cairo, Egypt, in the desert, okay, Nile River. They're like, I got it, I got it, I got it. Right there, right there, we're going to create the world's biggest structures that man has ever seen, mankind, and uh, we're going we're to put them in forms of a, a pyramid, shape of a pyramid, and even better, these are going to be the tombs for the pharaohs. Could you imagine there was actually a human being at that one moment that said that that's going to be the Empire State Building, or that's going to be Lady Liberty, or that's going to be the, the pyramids? Could you believe that shit? Imagine how 16 years old, I was like, fuck this, I want a Lamborghini. What happens is we get off that sometimes. The point is, if you can control your thoughts, you can control your reality, right? Work on your thoughts. So this is stuff I learned from Holton Bucks. If you guys know me and been in the academy, this is like fucking, this is what molded me. This is what I operate off of. You see? Get the idea? Okay, everybody cool? Everybody cooling? Okay, beautiful. Let's go to the next one, number six. It says, you got to go live. You got to go live how it feels. You, you got to live how it feels to be a champion before you ever do it. You got to practice it. You're not just going to wake up one day and say, I'm a six-figure earner, but I never thought, uh, but never thought, that, uh, thought it was what it was like to be one. It doesn't happen that way. So what I did, I started lying to myself. I started lying to myself. I started telling my wife we're millionaires. She's like, you fucking nuts, bro. You tripping. Okay, go throw out the trash. So I started envisioning myself as a multimillionaire. I start like, my being is my face changing and everything. I'm fucking broke as shit. It's like 12 years ago, 13 years ago, and I just started like, fuck, we're millionaires, Diana. Can you believe this shit? I started believing my own lies. That's how it works. You know people that believe their whole lies, their, their own lies? And they're not even, like, they don't even know their lying. They just believe their shit? That's what I was doing this way. Okay? Some of you guys know this poem. Myron Golden. Believing, 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 you will be living what you believe in, even though you will be lying Anything you tell yourself about a future-based outcome, you made it up. So if you tell yourself that people like to pay you, you made it up. If you tell yourself that people don't like to pay you, you made it up. So if you're going to make up stories about your future, doesn't it make sense to make up stories that serve you versus stories that do not? Diana. Diana, we're going to have such a great dinner tonight. Louis in town. I'm excited. Oh, yeah, Louis my bro. I can't wait to you know, catch up with Louis. Great. What if Louis showed up as an asshole? Because he do sometimes. What if the steak was burnt? What if the waiter was a jerk? What, if I'm going to make up stories about my future that hasn't happened yet, does it make sense to make up stories about my future that serves me versus stories that do not? Yeah, right? Yeah. Did I tell you on the podcast I was going to give you the best interview? You did before, yeah. Okay, was it? It was amazing. You don't fuck those motherfuckers up. <laughs> I paid him to say that. Okay, okay. I'm really nice. Yes, sir? What is that poem called? That poem? Yeah. It's called Mike Barron Thug Shit. <laughs> That's what it's called. Yeah. So it's called. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, gi I'll give it to you. Okay. You guys enjoying this shit? Yeah. Okay. 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 At, at this point, I usually feel like some people never see me in person. And there's always one that like, mm, I'm going to pray for him. I'm going to pray for him. I know what that shit means. Okay, good. That, it's crazy, man. Okay, let me go faster. Cheer for yourself, not your favorite sports team. Holton Bugs is talking about. People go to Wisconsin, Green Bay, and it's cold as hell, sub-zero temperature. They got the freaking Green Bay, you know, paint on their chest, but they're not going to go hard for their goals, their dreams. Don't be on the stands. Get on the, get on the damn field. Go as hard for yourself as you do for the L.A. Lakers. Go as hard for yourself as you do for the Charlotte Hornets. Okay, yes, entertainment is important. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, we should cheer. I love Tom Brady. love Michael Jordan. Okay? But go hard for yourself. This is all Holton Bucks. <laughs> Uh, my, my guy here, Holton Bug, says, my first two mentors in this industry, I've never shaken their hand. They have no idea I exist, but I know everything about their entire family. He's listening to audios. He's reading books. 
So I got a mentor right now that I never met. I'm talking about Tillman Fertitta. He's a billionaire. He owns the Houston Rockets. He owns more restaurants than anybody in the whole restaurant game. I listen to him every single day. People ask me, like, who's your mentor right now? I was like, Tillman Fertitta. They're like, the fucking billionaire? I was like, yeah. They're like, what the fuck? I was like, yeah. Listen to him every single day. So I, 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 I was already listening to tapes, but I, I, I conceptualized the, the idea of like, fuck, just because like I don't touch them or pull up on them, they're still a source of information and still mentors. I've never met Hector Lamarck, and I'm going to meet Hector Lamarck. That guy's have the fucking damn near the biggest impact on me. So I got that concept, okay? Straightforward, right? Number 10, I lied to myself about stuff that was going to take me into the direction I wanted to go. Why? Because the subconscious mind doesn't know the difference between a truth and a lie. I just said the same thing, okay? I'm like making up stories that serve me versus stories that do not. And that's what you should do, okay? Not one day I will have that mansion, okay? You talk it in present tense. The mansion's already yours. What you got to understand is that everything you want, it already exists, okay? I broke up with my girlfriend. She broke up with me, and uh, I was fucking a little sad boy. And uh, I must have been, shit, what is it, 23. I'm on my balcony, full moon, no bullshit. And I go up to the balcony, and I'm like, you don't know it yet, but I can't wait to meet you. And I know you're out there. And to my future wife, I love you. Met Diana two weeks later. I was already on the route to, to meet her. Six years old, one day I'm going to have a Lamborghini. I was already on the route to have that. Everything you want already exist. If not this form, another. And not this universe, another. It already exists. Everything you want already exists. Okay? Cool. Everybody good? Y'all good? Yeah. Okay. I'm going a little faster, y'all. Heck Lamarck. Okay? Heck Lamarck is a, um, he's worth about 60 million last time I checked. 60 million. And uh, he's a direct sales guy. He's a sales guy. He's also a student of Tom Hopkins. And I would say I listen to more, more to Heck Lamarck than any other person over the last 15 years. To this day, I still listen to him every single week. If you come to the back, I'm playing his information over and over. And uh, here's a bar. I didn't include this in the slides because this comes from Tony Robbins. It's called net development. Net development stands for no extra time. So you just play that shit in the back. You're doing your deal. You're driving. You don't have to stop and just listen to Hector Lamar or Tony Robbins. It plays in the background, subconscious mind. Okay? So turn your car into a university. And I did. Turn your car into a university. Okay? Thoughts are things. Thoughts are things. Just like I said. If you notice, these principles are like, between some of these people, they're all like lining up. That's how you know it's a principle. A principle cannot like be counterintuitive or knock off another principle or wouldn't be a principle. That's what I learned uh, with Myron recently. Thoughts are things. Control your thoughts, control your life. Control your thoughts, control your life. Okay, number three. Okay, if I could, would you? I talked about that earlier. Okay, he learned that from Tyler Hawkins. I learned that from both of them. I'm gonna skip past that. I've never met anybody that's made big money that's great, that's not incredibly tough mentally. Their key ingredient is their toughness. So right here, we have these kids. Some of these kids are so damn tough. And we interview all the time. And they always walk in, and they're like, Mike, you don't, they, uh, Connor, you said this to me fucking, what, yesterday? Hey, you don't know me yet, man, but I'm the next one. You remember that? I love that. Do you know how many fucking people tell me that? And act like a little bitch? All of them, except for you. Okay, all of, hey man, I know about Casey's story, I know about uh, uh, Trey's story, I'm the next one. They're not, they're not willing to go through that fire. They're not going to, willing to go through what, ta what it takes because at the other end of that is a phoenix. Uh, at the other end, uh, is a terminator that goes through that. So I always work on these guys' toughness. I'm working on my toughness. I love li listening to Kobe Bryant, you know, real, where he's talking and, 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 and I, I, you know, assume some, uh, uh, assume some of that beingness. Number five, don't ever feel people. I was scared to go to Gucci. I was scared to go to Louis Vuitton. I was scared to go to Lamborghini. I felt inferior. This guy told me, like, don't ever let people, don't it, treat people with respect, kindness. We're all one. We're all God's children, okay, in my opinion. Do not ever feel people are better than you, okay? Don't give them that. You need to be intense. Okay, the reason why I'm the guy in my organization because I'm fucking intense. Mark, in the back, you, you ever see me just fucking pacing? Always. What, 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 what happens? <laughs> Mark, Mark, ha, Mark, there's things you guys hide from because you know I'll, I'll kill somebody. Speak on it. Uh, 
You need to be intense, okay? Big money comes from big energy, Myron Golden, okay? You need to be a drip. We closed Conor McGregor, it took me a year. Messages manager, every single fight, every single month, I'm thinking about you, I'm in Orange County, I'm in the area, let me know if you like donuts. You need to be a drip. Okay, good, we're good? Okay, good, okay, good. Uh, 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 Hector Mark, if you're thinking, $10,000, if you think about this, what you're doing, okay, it, it, says, it says you need to think about what you're doing every single day. If you're thinking about this, what you're doing every single day, you're at, okay, if you're not thinking about this every single day, if you're not thinking about growing your podcast every single day, you're crazy. If you're not thinking about freaking, you know, your dog training business, you're crazy. If you're not thinking about that thing that you do, Armand, you're fucking crazy. And the problem is most people, we want instant gratification, and I said we got to go from being external on the surface, man, I'm gonna be the next fucking Casey and Trey Toner. Bullshit. And we gotta actually take that in, and you gotta be at the point where it's not what you do on the surface, it's who you are. So at a cellular level, I was like, fuck this, we're going all in. And I was thinking about my success. I haven't stopped. I've been thinking about my success every fucking second. Like, when I'm out with my wife and kids, I'm thinking about my success every fucking second, every day. And I was hanging out with Consuela, and, and She's like, Mike, we got to partner up. Okay, Leanne, you're like, I don't have this back home. You don't ever catch me off. I'm always thinking about fucking success, progression, helping people. Every, that's all I fucking think about. Every second. Like, like, like Jim Carrey, what is that movie, 23, 21? He got all the fucking things on his face. I'm like, ah! it's Fucking weird. It's crazy, man. So that's, that's what it is. You got to think about, you got to master your craft. Go become a black belt. Work on that shit every fucking second. I'm telling you. I don't know how my wife stays with me. Fucking crazy. Okay. Uh, 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 number nine. You have to do it, what you do, whether it's jujitsu, dog training, learning sales, whatever the hell. Uh, Alex, you have the barbershops. You have to do it when you don't feel like doing it. When it's stressful, when it's hard, when you don't want to show up, when it's raining, when it's painful, when somebody stole from you. I'm going to keep it real. Louis. Someone that you know that been on my team four years downloaded $150,000 contacts and gave it to this fucking motherfucker that left our company and is fucking jacking our, our clients. You know? I'm at that point, it don't phase me. Been through, it's nothing. Leave that fucking for the attorneys. But I'm not gonna come here and be all sour with you. I don't give a fuck about that. I give a fuck about this. I give a fuck about y'all. Okay? Show up, once again. Just, okay. Uh, Hector says, it's not supposed to be an easy business. It's supposed to be very, very tough, mentally especially. The reason for this is to weed out the wimps, quote, the system is set up the way that, uh, the, the, the system is set up. The way this business is run is to weed you out, weed out, that, weed those out that are weak. If you're a weak person, if you're not mentally tough, if you're not tough, you're supposed to quit. We want you to quit. We want you to leave. When you see people quit, I go, hallelujah, great. Now I got rid of that uh, weak crybaby, okay? That's the way I think when I see people quit. Not on the surface, I'm not like that, but in my mind, I'm saying this. Isn't it great we don't have to deal with that guy anymore? It's not cruel. It's the way life is. It goes to those that persevere. I took that shit, and when people quit, I'm like, fucking great. John's like, oh my gosh, our director, he wants to get that bitch out of here. I'm not going to say it publicly, but I, I, I watched this videos I'm going to give you, and I, I, I became that guy. So every now and then, I, I, a month will go by, I don't listen to Hector Lamar, it freaks me out. I'm like, holy shit, the cadence, the flow, I'm like, I fucking became that guy. It's insane. So I, I adopt that. I'm like, oh my gosh, uh, Marv wants to quit, and the onboard, fucking great, perfect. They're supposed to quit. Let's keep going. Let's fucking keep building this rocket. And I really took that from Hector. You know, I was already like that. But anyways, yeah. Last one. Last one. Last one. You guys good? Y'all still with me? Okay. Anybody? Is it good for anybody? Okay, good. Russell Brunson. I was talking about Hector. Yeah. Because your ass would never listen back then. You're too smart. Yeah. 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 And then it just hit, and that's when I was just like, I didn't give a fuck. Firing people, hiring people, 
Yeah. yeah. Lou, do you remember like four years ago? I was telling you like these guys are the ones that have influenced me. This is, this is all the shit I've shared with you four years ago. You know, but now I'm in a different point in my career where I'm studying billionaires now. Hector, Hector Mark's awesome. Tom Hawkins is awesome. But like that's, that information is not going to get me to where I need to go. Remember we talked about a month ago, and I'm like, yo, Lou, here's the big thing I'm doing. You're like, Mike, Mike where are you getting sor uh, your, your source of info right now? I'm like, bro, I'm studying billionaires, Tilmer Fertitta. I'll send you some info. Remember that? Yeah, because yeah, that's what it is, data, information, always. You didn't even ask me, are you tapped in somewhere? You're like, dude, what is your source right now? You didn't even question it. You knew, like, I was on something, and what is it? Right. You feel? Okay, last one, Russell Brunson, how to create a mass movement. Okay, I'm going to go quick on this one. Russell Brunson, he says, uh, the way you create a mass movement, okay, if you go to our Closer Academy, right now there's well over 1,000 students, $10,000, and they all think, like, Mike's the man, and I'm not, but they think it. It's fucking nuts. If you guys ever been in my group, it, I got a fucking cult, full-fledged cult, cult. I'm about to get a flute and bring them all to the fucking river. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm going to go rob that fucking bank. It's crazy. For real. Like, I'm telling you, let me just give you some mass on this real quick. It is insane, okay? So what we... we what I don't do is teach sales. Sales is boring. Sales is whack. Who the fuck wants to do sales? Okay, here we go. 1,200 people. It's a 12-month program. Okay, if you don't renew, we kick you out. So we're talking about $12 million off this one offer. And happy birthday, Mike. Very nice. And, and uh, this person here is in here. And this person got a Mike Barron certification. And this person here made $350,000. And this person here, I'm from the UK. And I'm up at 4.30. And, and, it's positive, it's optimistic, no one's talking shit, no one's saying that we screwed them, no one's saying that John Pena is horrible. I got my Mike Barron t-shirt, and then this and this. It's because of this. This is what I learned from Russell Brunson. He says the way you create a, he's like, you don't want a buyer, you want droves of buyers. So, droves of buyers. So you don't, you don't uh, sell dog training services. You don't sell personal training services. The way you create a mass movement, somewhat like that, is there's an attractive character. So Russell says since the beginning of time, Going back to days even like Jesus Christ, there was an attractive character. Even crazy motherfuckers like Adolf Hitler. He studied it, he says. There's, every mass movement has had an attractive character, a cult leader. Then there's a new opportunity. Okay, I'm not teaching sales. Sales is boring. I got this brand new thing. You ever go to Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and like the guru guy pulls up, a little scam artist dude? You ever worry, wonder how those guys make money? Okay, let me tell you. So what they do is they package information in courses, I'm talking fast, and they get leads, and that's where I come in. Once they get the leads, you close the deals. So you get free leads, auto booking appointments, the guru needs the closer, the closer actually needs like the guru, and they gotta do all that damn work, and you get these fat commissions. This is how Trey Toner's making $70,000. Wow, it's a new opportunity, okay? And then future-based costs, okay? Louis, the big thing for you was you wanted a two comma club. That's why you kept the go high level and the click funnels. So we have two comma clubs. I have go high level. I, to me, it's fucking superior to click funnels. But they don't have Russell Brunson. They don't have the two comma club. Okay? Right? So when you combine all three elements, you have a mass movement. Go to a Russell Brunson event. I'll be there this year. You'll see anywhere from five to 10,000 people, internet people, funnel hackers. So I, met, I, I ran into Russell Brunson on the internet 2015. Clean cut, non-threatening, fast talking, smooth, white ass teeth, dude. Okay, and he's like, I got a brand new thing. It's called funnels. It's brand new. It's like having a sales guy or sales girl 24/7, and they qualify nonstop. And you, and the thing about it is, you don't have to have an expensive web developer. You can fire them, and look, it's drag and drop. It's a brand new thing. But the truth is, Squarespace and Wix and and uh, uh, WordPress could all do that. But he positioned it as like it's just a funnel thing. It's a brand new thing, not a website builder. It's a funnel. And if you just keep going, you're one funnel away. Dan Henry did it in six months. And I'm like, fuck. And then, what, nine years later, I still follow Russell Brunson. Okay, good? Everybody good? Okay, that's what it is. That's why you see my plaques on the damn wall. That's why you see the students, because we know how to do it, all right? It says, when starting a business, one of the first things you do is get clear on the client avatar, a.k.a. your ideal client, and answer the following questions. questions. Who is he or she? Where are they located? Where are they congregating? Where are they hanging out? And what results can you get him or her? You're going to start a bar. You're going to start a jiu-jitsu fucking academy. You're going to start a skateboard shop. You're going to start a personal training business. You're going to create a car business, whatever the hell, alarm clock, whatever. At the very front of the chapter, as you start this new journey, it's who is your avatar? Where's he or she located? 
okay, what results can, can you get for them? And that's pretty much it. We sat down, we did dinner last night, right? Do you remember one of the first questions when we sat down, I asked you? I'm not sure. Okay, Leanne, do you remember one of the first questions when we sat down yesterday? Who's your client? Any business I've done, whether it's been a seven-figure business or eight-figure business, I stopped and I started asking, who's the avatar? And you should too. That's what I learned from Russell Brunson. Pretty straightforward, okay? Number three, the stack and the close, okay? We get to the end. I did my, I, I, I did my five-step sales process. Introduction, Mike, nice to meet you. Fact finding, okay, tell me about your situation. Tell me about your needs and wants. Okay, great, I got it, I can help you. Okay, let me show you my presentation, how my product or service solves that problem, right? Boom, 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 test close. How does everything sound so far? Sounds great, good, let me move to the final step. When you make the offer, you stack the offer. You're gonna get this, and you're gonna get this, and you're gonna get the supervisors, and you're also gonna get the lifetime guarantee with the tires, and also you're gonna get the, the all leather package, you're also gonna get this and this. The way to make more money is create more value. So when you stack the offer like this, and but wait, there's more, and when you buy in the next 15 minutes, you're actually gonna get lifetime Ginsu knives, and you're gonna get the cookbook, and, right? Right? You stack on the offer. It's twelve hundred dollars. Have you heard enough to make a decision? Okay. Some of these guys are getting their asses kicked because they're like been in the game three years. They still don't do the stack. You stack it, and we can talk more about that. Okay. Uh, boring goes broke. You guys know me. Very low energy. Okay. Very low energy. Um, so I'm working on it. Boring equals broke. You don't have to be Jim Carrey. You don't have to be Kevin Hart. The prolific index is what I learned from Russell Brunson, and the inner circle peeps have seen this for sure. Uh, this is called the prolific index index on the left hand side is mainstream eat four servings of fruits and vegetables go get a degree go go get a good career and then go get a 401k i'm not an education hater i'm not but i'm talking about mainstream right hand side is crazy okay louis that's me and you tonight going to tj hang a whole bunch of prostitutes got the cocaine the tequila <laughs> alex is feeding scorpions and we're fucking outside with straps out the window and we're like west side motherfuckers west side driving 160 miles we're gonna go to jail that night or worse. That's crazy, okay? That sounds fun though. Anyways, on that other end is prolific, prolific. So I'm not trying to be something I'm not. I've always been like this. I've always been a little inappropriate. I've always been fucking goofy and, and, and terrorizing classrooms. I wanted to be the class clown, wanted to be the man. But you wanna hang out in this prolific zone. Lady Gaga, uh, Dennis Rodman, uh, Michael Jackson, Eminem, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, good? Almost done, y'all. Okay, we're gonna break and eat some food. Uh, number five, traffic already exists. Traffic already exists. You don't have to create traffic to build a successful business. What you want to do is position yourself on the receiving end of traffic so that you can break out of obscurity, get more eyeballs, raise awareness about your product and services, and ultimately increase sales. You go to Sunset Boulevard in LA. The billboard is on Sunset. It's not half a mile down the road. Traffic already exists. Dan Taylor, one of my old partners, was like, Mike, when I was making all this money as a personal trainer, all the GMs never understood how I was making so much money. He's like, my target demographic audience was like women, specifically like moms. Where do the women and moms like to hang out? They go to the cardio machines, they go to the Stairmaster, they go to the treadmills. So what I'd go over there, I would just have all my prospects there, and I'm like, hey, did you get the free session yet? Did you get the free training? And I was converting those into what? High paying, high ticket, personal training clients, because the traffic already exists. Your client is already congregating. Do you know what happens when I go to a Tony Robbins event? When I go to a Russell Brunson event? When I go to a Grant Cardone event? You know what, I do? You know what, what, what we're doing? We fucking walk away with over six figures every fucking time because traffic already exists. You goofballs go listen to Grant, but I'm out here fucking honey, my team is. In fact, they are, and I'm just watching them. That's what we do every single time. Mark, you know that. You know that. That's what we do. Okay, right? So number six, a real business did not... Does, uh, a real business doesn't just have one product, they have a product line, it has something to get a specific result. When I, before this, only had one offer. I had that motivated training client's offer, it's $5,000 offer. So you can either give me 5K or I couldn't do business with you at the time. So now I got a free thing, a $97 thing, a $2,000 thing, a $10,000 thing, a $12,500 thing, a $25,000, $50,000, and $100,000 thing. thing. A real Nike doesn't have one shoes, okay? They, they don't. Right? You know, you, you, you know, like the freaking, you have to have a product line. Gucci does not have one freaking jacket. They got a product line. So you have to have a product line. Intro, basic, and major. Intro, zero to $99. Basic, 100 to 999. Major, 1,000 above. Okay? 
Cool. Russell Brunson, your offer should be 10 times the ask. If I'm asking for 1,000, it needs to be worth $10,000 minimum. If I'm asking for 100, the offer needs to be $1,000 minimum. Okay, if I'm asking for $10,000, the, the value, excuse me, should be worth $100,000, right? Everybody got that? Easy, self-explanatory? Okay, beautiful, beautiful. Hook story offer, okay? If you go look at any of my freaking live uh, ads, Jorge, you know this, we use a hook story offer. Hook is the attention grabber, story is the contents, the story, the offer is the call to action. Hey, 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 stop scrolling, check this out. You know what's better than this $500,000 car? You know what's better than that? Okay, you sitting in this $500,000 car because you own it. Listen up. My name is Mike Barron, and I went from broke to eight figures by matching one skill set. It's called high ticket sales and closing. And because people have been hitting me up, they're like, Mike, what the heck are you doing? I'm like, okay, let me tell you what I'm doing. I put together a brand new master class just last week to break down my process, how we get clients, and how we like, drive cool shit like this, and how you can too, and it's totally free. Uh, I gotta go like, help some people. You gotta get the master class. Click the link. Register and we get results, shout me out. All right, I'll see you at the top. Bye, bitches. Ugh. <laughs> Hook story offer. If you see my ads, I do it just like that. Um, I'm thinking, okay. I was with you a week ago, and we're talking about yoga, and I was like talking like, like I'm you. Like, hey, this <laughs> People always trip out, like, Mike, how could you do this for yoga? How could you do this for dog training? How could you do this for real estate? How could you, and, and I, I always do it in one take. Because I master hook story offer, the hook, the attention grabber, okay? Hey, stop scrolling. Good, okay, good, everybody got that? Okay, almost done, y'all. Uh, 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 number nine, your story is what connects you to your audience. Ooh, this is where we're gonna end. And I'm back tomorrow, we're gonna build all the fucking funnels. I'm kind of relieved that uh, I'm done for the day, okay? So, I'm gonna go in the back and do some drugs, it's crazy, okay? Um, so this is the last thing. Um, how many people in the room have known of me before working with me over six months? Is there anybody? Britt? Okay. A couple of y'all? Okay. You, okay. Did you, uh, did you, like, what did you, you know about my background? Like, how did I grow up? Um, what, like, how old was, how old was my mom when she had me? 16. 16. Okay. We're, where did I grow up? Somebody beat me to it. Okay, good. My biological father, was he in my life? Okay, was I a, a good teenager or was I like a juvenile delinquent? Okay, did I grow up like in my 20s? Did I have like instant success and I fucking was making millions or like was I broke? Right, so everybody knows that kind of story, okay? Um, and I tell that story all the time, all the time. This is one of the most powerful things you could do. This is one of the most powerful things you could do in business. What challenges have you overcome to get to the point where you're at today? What backstory makes you human? If I was like a son of a bitch that came up here and be like, dude, I got fucking everything. I'm the man, I'm the shit, I'm that. And I just, nobody likes a douchebag. Nobody likes an asshole. No one likes that. We better go fuck that guy up, for real, okay? Uh, for real, right? So. What, what I do is, I'm kind of getting off subject, I, I do a lot of self-deprivation. And I play myself a lot. And I do it because I always done that, but I also do it with tact. Hey, I'm not that smart. Man, if I had Casey Cox's look, I have four girlfriends right now. But I don't, so I only got one wife. Okay, you, ever, you guys heard me say that in my content. My, because I don't want to be that guy that just thinks he's the shit. People can't connect with that because it's too far, okay? It says, uh, it says, it says uh, 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 let me see here. It shows that it's, you started in a similar place as them, and now you're currently where they want to be. Your story gives your audience hope that they can achieve their goals, which should align with your product and services. Don't shy away from repeating yourself over and over. Okay. okay. Talk about storytelling. Telling your story. It, it, you know, like some people have, I'm like, dude, I was a two-time felon when I graduated high school. That's not bragging, but like, it's part of the story. I leaned into it. You know, some of us have had things we've done that we're not proud of. Congratulations, you're human. Lean into it and do it with good taste. Okay, you know, be like, hey, I had that motherfucker on gunpoint. I was about to blow his fucking, I'm gonna do all that shit. Okay, <laughs> you, got, you know. So now, I'm gonna end you guys with this, and there's a reason why I'm gonna end this to you, with you, because if you never heard this, you need to pay very close attention. The biggest, almost the biggest thing, one of the biggest things I learned from Russell Brunson was a hero's two journey. 
And in the Heroes 2 journey, he's heard this multiple times, but in the Heroes 2 journey, it is a framework that Hollywood uses and most successful movies in cinema in the past hundred years and beyond follow this framework. They follow this framework. Okay, there's a playwright, I have to get his name, but he's the guy that people bring like, you know, the scripts to or whatever. Okay, and he's like, does it follow the actual framework? It's called the Heroes 2 Journey. He used to work with uh, Lucas back in uh, the Star Trek days. And Russell Brunson paid him a shit ton of money to talk to him, which is super dope. So now, the Heroes 2 Journey is this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go clockwise, my way. So at, at uh, what, 12 o'clock, you have the unlikely hero, he or she. No one ever thought he or she was gonna be shit. And as you start to progress, they get some sort of calling. Okay, Jorge, they get some sort of calling. But often they refuse the call. So they, they progress their life. They progress their life. And, and in this little uh, uh, clock, there's going to be like a line from, what, 9 p.m. to 3 p.m. Okay? Right? You guys got the picture? Circle with the line like this. Good? So now I'm going to 3 o'clock, and I'm, I'm about to go to the second line. And I'm, I'm leaving the ordinary world, and I'm going to the extraordinary world. And I meet the mentor or guide. Like, come with me. Let's, let's, let's go do this now. So now as I'm going down here, and I go to the... I'm leaving the ordinary world, I'm going to the extraordinary world, okay? I, I, I'm supposed to be the guy or gal, but I'm getting my ass kicked in this new world. And I show up the next day, I'm getting my ass kicked. And I'm showing up the next day, I'm getting my ass kicked. I'm showing up the next week, I'm getting my ass kicked. I'm showing up the next day, I'm getting my ass kicked. I am showing up the next day, and I boom, I actually fight back. Holy shit. Didn't get my ass kicked as bad. And I show up the next week, and I'm like, I'm starting to beat people up. I just got lasers now, and I can fly now, or whatever. And now I start really kicking ass. Okay, and I actually start becoming the man or the, the gal. And eventually I start ending up back here at nine o'clock and it was never enough for me to like just be so awesome. I had to go back to the ordinary world once again, right? You guys tracking? And I had to go back and help other people and I had to go free them or release them. You guys, you guys got that so far, right? Okay. Um, so I always tell this, but let's, let's talk about a movie that most of us know. Rocky Balboa, first Rocky. One of the opening scenes, he's in the gym He's in the ordinary world. He's at the gym. He's Rocky. He's, you know, it's what he does. And Mick's like, Rocky, when are you going to fucking step up and go fight? I ain't need, Mick. He didn't do it. And now Apollo, it's funny because I just watched it, and I haven't seen it since the 90s, the first one. Apollo, his, the guy opted out to fight. He got hurt, and they were in Philly, and they're like, there's this local guy, Italian Stallion. They made up the name. So now he had to fill in Rocky. So Rocky's leaving a nobody that's been a gym rat, and now he's going to fight Apollo Creed. So he's leaving the ordinary world to go into the extraordinary world. And he has who? Mick, the guide. He's there. Rocky, if you fight this bum like this, he's going to fucking kill you. He's going to kill you, Rock, I promise. Rocky looks like a little fucking, he's just like a little fool. He's trying to chase the chicken, and the chicken's just running on his legs. And he goes through it, and then he starts doing his thing. He, you know, he's sprinting on the beach. And now he starts fucking running fast on the beach. Now he's grabbing that fucking chicken. And now he's hitting that motherfucker like And now he's fucking killing it. Now he's running up the stairs. That motherfucker does one-handed push-ups. That motherfucker took off his shirt. He got a six-pack. Diana, stop looking at Rocky. Shit, that could be your grandpa at this point, girl. Stop. Nasty. Fuck. Anyway, little thing pops out the drawer again. Okay, sorry. Uh, so now, <laughs> so now what happens? He leaves the extraordinary world. He comes back. And now he fights Apollo, and now he's the people's champion, and we all love him. He's our savior in the movie. Right? Watch this. Remember Titanic, too? I never use this as an example. He's the poor kid, and he's like at the bottom of the damn thing, bottom of the barrel. And he goes to Exnory World. He meets, you know, the pretty girl, and, and this has happened, this one happened, and he's a street rat, and same thing with Aladdin. So, like, go look at Avatar. Anyone see the new Avatar? Remember the first Avatar? He was a human, goes to the planet, ordinary world. Now he, 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 he becomes the blue guy, and now he's leaving, and nobody liked him, nobody fucked with him, nobody, and now he has to go battle with the other chief and all that, and he got the respect, he became the man and did this, and then he's actually the guy, and then he had to go back and fight those other people, now he's the guy. How about the new one? How about the new one? He already is, he already is like the blue guy. He left his ordinary place, and he went to the waterland, right? And now he's driving the, he's trying to fly on the little water, you know, animal. And he's getting kicked off. And he's getting bucked off. And they, these other water guys got gills. And they got the tail. And he doesn't. And now he starts owning it. And now he starts making it happen. And now he starts fucking doing one-hand push-ups in his version. And now he becomes the man. And now he goes back and kicks some ass. 
and he comes back. Okay, two more. You ready? Neo in the Matrix. He's in the fucking cubicle. One of the opening sees he's getting bitched out. Mr. Anderson, your, your results, your stuff is not there. He's about to get fired. He's in his little ass cubicle. We, and later that night, we know what you're looking for, Neo. He gets hit up from Trinity. Refuses it. Then he meets the guide, Morpheus, right? He's about to go from the red pill, blue pill. He's about to leave his ordinary world and go to the extraordinary world. Almost every movie follows this shit. And once you know it, it's like, fuck. You already know what's happening. Okay, right? So now what happens is he goes there, gets his ass kicked. He goes to the dojo, gets his ass kicked, tries to jump across the building. He falls on his face, this and this. He finally almost jumps across. Like, oh my gosh, he's almost the one. And then actually he hits Morpheus, and now he starts fighting back. And now he's fucking fucking up agents. And now he's actually stopping bullets. First he's dodging bullets, then he's stopping them. And at the very end, he looks up and he flies. And you're like, what the fuck? Can't wait for part two, because he's coming back. <laughs> right? Okay, I'll give him one more. I got two more. I'll give him one more. Okay, I'll get you guys out in five minutes. Okay, Simba. Even though he's the king, that's ordinary for him. That's his normal life. And uh, what happens is he leaves the pride land and he goes to the Kunumatana land. Who are the mentors and guides? Timon and Pumbaa. And it's kind of weird. And, the veg and you're eating the worms and all this stuff is weird and all this weird. What the hell is going on? And then he starts living it. He starts liking it. He starts becoming the man. His mane came out, whatever. And then he actually becomes the man, reunites with Muf his dead father, Mufasa. And he's like the fucking king, the rightful king. He's like, fuck this. It's not enough to be a king in the Kunamatana land. Let me go back and let me kick some ass so I can be the people's champ. You see what I'm saying? Good? Last one. And we're, we're done with me today. There's a guy, he's born in 1984, on this day, March 22nd. His mom had him at 16 years old. Okay, this motherfucker, it, I'm telling you, he was fucked up in elementary school, hyperactive, OCD, um, just couldn't keep his hands off the kids. I just remember this kid, the, the, the principal and the nurses talked to him, they used to play, try to push drugs, but they never did drugs. And then what happened was he progressed to like fifth, sixth grade, and I, what, what I recall was he had the bottom five test scores in the state of California. Dad just told me that, okay? Then I became an athlete, and I became, uh, that guy became an athlete, team captain on wrestling and football, and I excelled. And I was on my way. Became actually a 3.8 student my eighth grade year. And I was like, on my way. But I, I refused that. I refused that. And I was like, fuck that. So what happens, I went to the corporate world, I graduated, stopped doing bullshit, I walked out of high school, two felonies, you guys know that. And I went to the corporate world, and I was just living my life. I was working nine to five, made it happen. And then something hit me one day, I had a girl named Yehida that used to know me. He said, Mike, do you still sell candy? Because you said you were going to get a Rolex. And I was like, what the fuck? I forgot about that. I forgot about that dream. And I, and, and I snapped out of it. And I'm like, fuck, I'm going to get back on that horse, get back on route, and I'm going to go become a fucking multimillionaire. Fuck this. So I started listening to success tapes and motivational tapes and people like Grant Cardone and Tom Hopkins and Hector Lamarck and people like Russell Brunson. So I actually left San Diego and I went to Grant Cardone's office in Miami. And I thought it was big shit, because when I was in corporate, I became a six-figure earner. I became a president out of college in three years. When I got there, it was not what I thought. I was the big kid in high school that threw touchdowns for a night, and I went to the big college, and I was like six-stream bench warmer, and I wasn't shit. These people had more skill than me. These people had more experience than me. These people were more confident than me. These people were better spoken than me. I used to go home at night, call, call my wife and cry, and say, I don't think I should be here. These guys are too good. And she, she would say, yes, you should. Grant saw something in you, he invited you there, get your ass back up and do it again tomorrow. And what happened is I, I got whooped and, 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 and it was so hard and I finally quit. And when I, when I came back down to San Diego, I hid from all my friends for six months because everyone knew, everyone thought that Mike's gonna be our guy. And I wasn't, I was a quitter. So I hid for six months. Only, thing, only person I seen was Bruce and Mark. I didn't want nobody to know. And I never gave, gave, gave up on it. And I started to remember what Grant taught me and six months later, I'd get these cognitions, these light bulbs. I would get these huge light bulbs, and I'd say, fuck, that's what he was talking about. So I wasn't ready for the information at the time, but then what happened was, when my awareness raised, and I did more development, I got really good. Really fucking good. I made a million dollars my first year in business. Signed up Conor McGregor, signed up people like Patrick Bed David. I got so fucking cold at closing, I closed anybody in the fucking room that I wanted to. And if I didn't close you, it's because I don't like you. But it was never enough for me to be that guy. My passion and purpose to help those often left behind. So instead of being selfish and doing it for me, this is why I had to go find a Casey Cox, a John Pena, a Donald Trey Toner. I, had, I, I, I ate bullshit so long 
that the people after me, my little brothers and sisters, don't have to do it. I already paved the way. So long story longer, this is what we do today. This is why Trey Toner got a Lamborghini at the age of 21, lives in a penthouse, and that took me 35 years. So guys, I'm here to help, support, love, and my name is Mike Barron, and thank you for coming this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.